After the rule of the God Emperor, the old political factions vie once again for ascendancy in the remnants of the Imperium. Of these groups, the Bene Gesserit and the Bene Trilax are in the strongest positions, the Trilaxu hoping their perfected face dancers will assure them supremacy, while the Bene Gesserit are once again in control of their breeding program, and equally important, the world of Arrakis. The Bene Gesserit have continued to purchase Duncan Idaho Golas from the Bene Trilax, curious as to his potential for breeding, and determined to understand why the God Emperor used him time and time again when he controlled their program. They have also continued to breed the ancestors of the Atreides line, still fascinated by the genes of the family that produced both the Kwisatz Haderach and the God Emperor. One such Atreides descendant is Miles Teg, the Bene Gesserit's highly skilled Supreme Bashar who commands their armies and is brought out of retirement at the beginning of Heretics of Dune. Miles is an exceptional individual and brilliant military commander, educated by the Bene Gesserit and possessing the abilities of a Mentat. He is the son of Janet Roxburgh, a Bene Gesserit of fish speaker heritage, and Losky Teg, an employee of Chum, chosen by the Bene Gesserit for their breeding program because of his gene potential. Teg is particularly noted for his strong resemblance to the original Duke Leto Atreides, and it is noted that he himself has sired children for the Bene Gesserit breeding program, one of particular significance being the Reverend Mother Darby Odrad. The Bene Gesserit revealed to him his ancestry while testing him for the abilities bred into the Atreides by the God Emperor's breeding program, though it is revealed that Teg does not possess them. He is brought out of retirement to become the weapons master and tutor to the latest in a long line of Duncan Idaho Golas, and additionally is tasked with reviving the youth's original identity. This is to be done by Teg mainly because of his physical resemblance to Duke Leto Atreides, the original Idaho's lord and master. While instructing the Idaho Gola on Gamu, the keep is attacked by the Trilaxu, during which Teg is able to flee with both Duncan and Lucilla. Lucilla has been tasked with sexually imprinting the youth by the Bene Gesserit so that they may control him better. They hide in a Harkonnen no globe, and Teg is able to restore Duncan Idaho's memories without allowing Lucilla to imprint the youth. Upon trying to escape from Gamu, Miles Teg is eventually captured while allowing Idaho and Lucilla to escape. It is his capture and consequent interrogation that creates a crisis point for Miles Teg similar to that used to restore Agola's original memories, causing an evolutionary leap and strange new abilities to spring forth in the aging Bashar. Miles Teg's new abilities include a degree of prescience but otherwise bear no real resemblance to the Kwisatz Sadarax of his Atreides ancestry. Teg's capture, and then torture by the honoured Matres, is to be conducted by the use of a tea probe, though it is noted that the tea probe is not of Ixian manufacture. Tea probes are another machine evolution spurred by the various necessities of technological and genetic changes in the now defunct Imperium. The device is able to take the memories, thoughts and personality of an individual, whether they are living or dead, and store them in digital form for scrutiny. The tactical response used by the Bene Gesserit and others against such a device is to use the substance share, the presence of which in the body prevents the device from capturing an individual's personality. The tea probe used by the Honoured Matres, however, is a product of the scattering, and its design has been improved so that share no longer affects its use. Teg himself has never used such a device interrogating someone, and notes the Bene Gesserit prefer to use pain and their truth sensibilities rather than depend on such a machine. Teg suspects that there is something in this attitude of a hangover from the Butlerian Jihad, rebellion against machines that could copy out the essence of a human's thoughts and memories. Teg studies the device as it is used upon him, and his mentat trained mind begins to consider deeper the results that such a technological terror may achieve from plundering his personality. It is this observation that I believe is of great importance when discussing the nature of the enemy in the Dune series. Frank Herbert's death meant the seventh and final Dune novel was never completed, 
the crux of which was to focus on Kralizek and the end result of the Golden Path, where mankind would fight in a struggle for survival in a climactic battle against the unseen enemy. As Tegas tortured his understanding of the Gola technology, and in particular the creation of the Duncan Idaho Golas over the years, changes in a moment of intense observational scrutiny. An organic chain of responses existed within Teg. The machine could trace those out as though it made a duplicate of him. The share and his mentat resistance shunted the searchers away from his memories, but everything else could be copied. It will not think like me, he reassured himself. The machine would not be the same as his nerves and flesh. It would not have Teg memories or Teg experiences. It had not been born of woman. It had never travelled down a birth canal and emerged into this astonishing universe. Part of Teg's awareness applied a memory marker, telling him that this observation revealed something about the Gola. Duncan was decanted from an axolotl tank. The observation came to Teg with a sudden sharp biting of acid on his tongue. The tea probe again. Teg allowed himself to flow through a multiple simultaneous awareness. He followed the tea probe's workings and continued to explore this observation about the Gola, all the while listening for dit, dat and dot. The three puppets were oddly silent, yes, waiting for their tea probe to complete its task. The Gola. Duncan was an extension of cells that had been born of a woman impregnated by a man. Machine and Gola. An analysis on the Wikipedia website of the two mysterious characters of Marty and Daniel, who appear at the end of Chapter House Dune, presents two theories on the nature of these individuals. I believe that it is quite obvious that they were intended to be at least representatives of the enemy that will threaten humanity in Kralizek. The article presents Tupons' view that Marty and Daniel are in fact members of the new face dancers who have returned from the scattering. This conclusion could be an obvious one, despite Duncan Idaho at one point observing that if they were face dancers, they were not Skytail's face dancers. Those two people behind the shimmering net belonged to no one but themselves. Herbert, however, never approached plot in a simplified manner, and subterfuge by the author against the reader is not only a trademark of Frank Herbert, it is implicit in the actions and thoughts of many of his characters in the Dune series. Plans within plans within plans is a common motif of political action within the books, and it is quite likely that in presenting an elderly couple working in a garden who may have a slight resemblance to the face dancers was yet another deliberate deception. It is however possible face dancers of the scattering have in some way interacted with machine intelligence, and there is more than a suggestion or two that Marty and Daniel have some relation to the Tleilaxu. John C. Snyder's review of Sandworms of Dune, the second of a two-part conclusion to the Dune sequence by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson, discusses the fact that Daniel and Marty are thinking machines. He notes that fans have waited over 20 years to find out who Daniel and Marty are, and apparently Frank Herbert's answer is, that they're thinking machines who've been watching and waiting for 15 millennia. Snyder's review of Hunters of Dune also mentions the apparent disappointment of the characterization of the great enemy, finding them to be cartoonish and little different than Harkonnens with metal faces. Tegg's observations point to the nature of a Gola being a hybrid of human and machine technology. The Golas, it would seem, are as close to a violation of the tenets of the great convention that emerged post-Butlerian Jihad. The fact that the universe of Dune is shaped so fundamentally by the resulting aftermath of this crusade against thinking machines, that humanity's evolution is shaped by it to such a wide and varied degree, would suggest that Herbert's idea of the great enemy returning was indeed that of machine intelligence. It is this idea that is carried on in Hunters of Dune and Sandworms of Dune, with the final Duncan Idaho, a new Kwisatz Saderach, merging in symbiosis with machine intelligence in a similar way that Leto II does with the Sand Trout. It therefore would seem fair to say that Tupons' suggestion was indeed incorrect, ignoring as most commentators do the importance of the Butlerian Jihad to the framework of the narrative while at the same time it should be noted that Snyder does not understand this for the very same reason. 
Tegg's transformation in Heretics of Dune is, apart from his limited prescience, a development of his physical and perceptual abilities rather than possessing the attributes of the Kwisatz Sadarax. His body is able to physically accelerate to such a speed that his captors are unable to perceive his movements, allowing him to kill them and escape once again. Tegg's transformation expends an incredible amount of energy, forcing him to consume vast amounts of carbohydrate rich foods while resting. He is able to gather an army around him, killing a great deal of honoured matres before returning to Rakis. Here he once again fights a holding action against the honoured matres, allowing Duncan, Shiana, and a single sandworm to flee to the Bene Gesserit homeworld of Chapter House. The planet of Rakis is destroyed along with Teg and his men, the honoured matres doing so to wipe out the sandworms and their legacy, namely those pearls of the tyrant's awareness that continued to shape the events of the universe. Teg is recreated by the Bene Gesserit as a Gola in Chapter House Dune, their curiosity piqued by the unusual abilities he manifested after his torture on Gamu, in addition to returning to them one of their greatest military leaders. Once again the Bene Gesserit attempt to imprint Agola under their control, and again this fails, the original Teg having been trained to resist these sexual techniques. The great heretic of the title of the fifth Dune novel leads the offensive against the honoured Matres, and later helps Duncan and Shiana escape the Bene Gesserit in the No ship he originally stole on Gamu. In a sense, Teg is a mirror to the young final Duncan Idaho Gola, possessing many of the same attributes. There is a certain degree of affinity between the two, developed by the shared stresses that both must go through as Golas, in order to have their memories restored. They are also very much pawns used respectively by the God Emperor and the Bene Gesserit for their breeding programs, and often manipulated by their sense of honour. Miles Tegg, prior to the final Kwisatz Haderach, is also one more unexpected evolutionary change occurring in the Atreides genetic line. <laughs>